Hello there. Welcome to the seventh week of uh, our course, Elements of Literature and Creative Communication. In fact, uh, we are discussing fiction this week and we would be continuing our discussion of fiction even next week. If you can quickly recall, uh, we began our discussion with uh, defining uh, fiction and afterwards we went on to discuss uh, various elements of fiction. In fact, in the last class, if you can quickly recall, we began with uh, a discussion on plot, character, theme, style, tone, setting and how all of them constitute uh, fiction as such. In other words, uh, you can look at uh, these elements as building blocks, you know. What are elements of fiction? Well, of course, we as we discussed, you can consider them as some kind of building blocks that together constitute uh, fiction. And uh, when we discussed uh, plot, we discussed how a plot uh, can be looked at, studied and analyzed uh, uh, from Freytag's uh, pyramid point of view. And you have also uh, discussed, you know, different types of characters, how in characters you have uh, flat characters, round characters, static characters, dynamic characters, all right. And when it comes to theme, style, tone, how it reveals the idiosyncratic features of the novel and when it comes to theme, how it discusses the overall vision of the writer, uh, the philosophical tenets that uh, underlie any work of art and all these things. Well, in this class, uh, we are going to look at fiction and its branches. Now, well, of course, uh, you are uh, very clever. I know this because the moment uh, you looked at this title, you understood the figure of speech involved here, right? Because we are comparing uh, fiction to a tree, but it is not a direct comparison, it is an indirect comparison, therefore it becomes a, a metaphor. So, if fiction becomes a metaphor, then various types of fiction become branches of uh, the tree called fiction, right? That is why we call it fiction and its branches. Well, of course, uh, well, I do not need to explain the concept of uh, types of fiction because the, mom the moment we make use of, uh, you know, this metaphor of branches and tree, then you understood what this business of fiction and different types of fiction is all about because branches per se are not fiction, right? Or branches per se are not tree, but what is tree in that sense? Well, it is a sum total of the branches, the roots, the trunk and everything. Similarly, for fiction, elements of fiction constitute fiction and types of fiction also define fiction. That is the reason why we have used this metaphor fiction and its branches, all right. Okay. Now, let us quickly recall in order to understand this concept of uh, types of fiction, what are the varieties. When we say types, we mean varieties. You can quickly recall different novels that you have read, you know. I am sure you must have read uh, some novels or the other, be it in English or in your own languages, right. So, now quickly recall the different lang different uh, uh, novels that you have read and, uh, you know, and, 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 and think about uh, variations in them. When I say variations, it is not uh, necessarily or not just in terms of uh, subject and its theme. Obviously, every novel is different uh, from uh, the other novel because it has uh, uh, a unique subject or unique treatment of the subject and all that. You can also recall it uh, in terms of its style and structure because each novel has its own distinct style and it has its own unique structure, right. So, branches when we say uh, types of fiction, these types of fiction have got to do with these distinct styles and structures, all right. So, uh, with this background, let us go ahead and discuss, uh, you know, the variations in fiction and uh, the reasons behind that and within uh, these types of fictions. Well, types of fictions can, can be broadly called genres of fiction. We have already discussed the concept of genre and form in, uh, uh, you know, during our discussion on uh, poetry or maybe a little before that. So, let us quickly uh, recall those concepts as well here, okay. Yeah. 
broadly speaking fiction can be uh, classified into three broad genres you know it is a very broad genre. Okay. So, first can be called literary fiction, literary fiction is generally considered as a serious fiction you know uh, these writers are eyebrow writers, highbrow and they belong to uh, I mean uh, I mean this they, they discuss uh, uh, the philosophy of life uh, uh, and they present uh, the truths that they have discovered in the form of fiction in a, in a, in a detailed way you know. So, that is uh, literary fiction that is why we have uh, uh, Tolstoy there you know. And then we have uh, genre fiction which is also called popular fiction. In fact, many of you have uh, uh, read uh, uh, many of you may have read literary fiction, but more than literary fiction many of you may have read uh, genre fiction or popular fiction. Generally these uh, the novels belonging to this category are available uh, in airports or in uh, railway stations or in book stand. So, immediately pick and by the time your bus comes or when you are waiting for your train to arrive then you read it and all that you know uh, popular fiction. And then you have uh, mainstream fiction you know uh, mainstream fiction uh, you know it is uh, not technically speaking it is not a very distinct uh, genre, but uh, when genre fiction and literary fiction when they grow out of their boundaries and reach the collective consciousness of uh, the society that is when we call it mainstream fiction. In other words uh, mainstream fiction could be from genre fiction or even from literary fiction all right. So, this is something we are going to discuss uh, all of them uh, uh, in a little more detailed manner in our subsequent slides, but to begin with these are the broad categories of fiction. Now, let us quickly recall our uh, discussion or distinction uh, uh, between form and gen genre. Okay. In the very uh, first week or probably in the second week we discussed the difference between form and uh, genre and we said that you know in order to understand this concept better we brought in the metaphor of uh, uh, a building you know the architecture of the building can be called form and the interior design of that building can be called genre right. So, the architecture the outer structure of the building can be called form and the interior design of uh, that particular building can be called genre. However, you know Webster dictionary defines uh, genre as a category, a category of artistic, musical or literary composition of course, depending on whether it is a musical album or if it is a movie or if it is a novel or if it is literature you have uh, genres everywhere. Therefore, basically genres deal with categories characterized by a particular style or form or content that is a very broad uh, uh, definition of uh, genre. It is a category in other words genre means a category. In other words how do we understand genre in a, uh, a little better way? Well, in order for you to understand genre you please remember there is story, there is uh, plot and there is character and there is a setting the locale in which uh, the geographical locale the time in which it is set all of them they together constitute the genre. In other words in order to understand uh, uh, to which genre the novel that you are reading belongs to or the fiction that you are reading belongs to you will have to analyze it in terms of its structure when I say structure setting character plot and action story. So, you get genre okay. and uh, genre markers again uh, these are they are called genre markers. Uh, some more genre markers are the length of the work you are dealing with or the type of the character settings themes including viewpoints and narratives they also determine uh, uh, genre. So, these are some things that we can uh, keep in mind, uh, but let us go with let us go ahead with a disclaimer here these are not uh, 
again you know exclusive category sometimes within these genres you can find overlapping of uh, different genres okay so uh, there are sub genres because in each genre there are sub genres and uh, sometimes writers can do different permutations and combinations and therefore within a broad genre they can insert a sub genre belonging to another genre and create a new type but what is the predominant genre is something that we can identify and within that some variations are definitely possible they are called sub genres these are some things that we can keep in mind okay these are not absolute when we say genres it, they are not absolute categories they just help us in understanding uh, uh, the broad style of uh, the work that you are reading why do genres matter of course genres matter because uh, they help readers understand better because a genre a work of uh, if, if fiction belongs to a particular genre then it has certain features it has certain elements it has certain uh, uh, type of stories it has certain set of characters and if you already like that particular type of uh, novel then you can go and uh, buy them so it helps us in deciding uh, uh, what we like and then accordingly we can go and read uh, similar works you know so writers also take advantage of uh, genre because uh, sometimes uh, they define a market you know they define a market and sometimes a genre also helps the writer in creating a certain template let's say for instance uh, there is a genre called historical fiction when we say historical fiction it already creates a certain template for the writer so that means you have to think of a story that belongs to uh, a king either a fictitious king or an historical king in fact uh, generally it's an historical king it's not history but you're writing about let's say for instance you want to write about ashoka the king ashoka so you have to do research on uh, uh, where ashoka lived that kind of geographical conditions uh, you know the style of his administration the way he dressed the way he spoke and all that so historical fiction has already provided a rough template for the writer to begin working on that's why they also help writers in extraordinary ways okay so now uh, let's go and in case you have you're already familiar with different types of uh, you know fiction different genres of fiction you can just uh, identify what is your favorite type all right so let's uh, go ahead without wasting much time let's go ahead and discuss uh, different genres let genres begin okay uh, yeah as i said uh, there are uh, umpteen genres of fiction in fact uh, more than 50 or 60 genres of fiction and again even that 50 or 60 is not exhaustive they are just uh, illustrative right they are just illustrative so the major genres are mystery romance fantasy thriller science fiction and all these things within them you can see different uh, permutations and combinations like a periodic table we have uh, compiled various sub genres in each of these uh, main genres let's say for instance in fantasy you have urban fantasy historical fantasy you have contemporary fa fantasy comic fantasy similarly in science fiction you have uh, you know dystopian fiction utopian fiction military science fiction cyberpunk all of them and in romance you have paranormal romance you have contemporary romance you have historical rom romance so all of them there are these are called subcategories we are going to discuss uh, uh, a few prominent uh, categories of fiction in the subsequent slides okay yeah uh, let's begin our discussion of uh, uh, types of fiction with uh, realistic fiction so uh, this is one of the predominant types of fiction that we get to read okay how do you identify realistic fiction uh, realistic fiction again is set in believable locations in fact it's not set in any kind of you know non believable settings in fact the setting let's say it can be in kolkata it can be in delhi it can be in bangalore it can be in mysore so these are the realistic settings generally in the contemporary times you know maybe in the or in the recent past recent past or contemporary times that's the setting and here you and i can easily identify the characters because they resemble us 
in fact uh, give i mean in a particular kind of a situation or an event these characters behave exactly the way you and i behave in other words their ability to respond to certain events is much similar to our ability to respond to those events so in other words you and i can find uh, a perfect replica of ourselves in realistic fiction right so there is uh, no scope for us not to disbelieve anything here because as i said when you read most of the times you may wonder it may be your story or my story it may be our story something like that so some of the popular works uh, that uh, belong to this category include dickens's hard times even oliver twist for that matter or premchand's godan or you are anantamurthy samskara or even chetan bhagat's five point someone of course this particular uh, is uh, chetan bhagat's five point someone uh, it is uh, you know it it accommodates several uh, genres within it but at one level you can also call it a realistic fiction okay and later i'll tell you uh, the other genres it belongs to then you can identify to which broad genre this particular work belongs to okay so these are the salient features that uh, you know uh, through which you and i can identify realistic fiction okay from uh, realistic fiction let's go to campus fiction in fact campus fiction is again a sub genre in realistic fiction you can call it so campus fiction can also be called uh, sometimes campus novel or college novel or even university novel it's called by several names and here you know the setting is restricted to an academic unit so it is uh, something like a college or an academic institute like iits iims or any universities or any uh, you know any of these academic units they are the settings you know that's what uh, that's a defining feature and by virtue of that you can identify the characters right you know if it is set in academic campus then the character should be students academic staff when we say academic staff principal professors and hierarchy is there and the relationship between uh, student factions student wars and student habits and even here you know romance is also part of it you know uh, campus romance it's called campus romance so love that takes place here love triangles all of them form the crux of campus fiction right now you understand right the moment you decide the setting the locale how your choice of characters is restricted your choice of uh, story is restricted and all these things okay so here you can discuss the student teacher relationship or some kind of illicit affairs that take place here campus love all of them are including learning ambitions of students and what are some of the academic impediments a student faces and how he or she overcomes that all of them form the crux of campus fiction of course you can see that uh, beautiful image really we wish uh, uh, you know our campus life uh, were to be as studious as this guy uh, is trying to make it to be uh, okay uh, yeah some of the well known it said that you know 1952 marks the beginning of uh, campus fiction especially uh, mary mccarthy's uh, the groves of uh, academy uh, set in uh, the united states that is supposed to be the genre inaugurating work campus fiction but of course you have some notable Uh, names J M Kadzi who is a major uh, uh, Nobel laureate South African uh, Nobel laureate and especially his work Disgrace published in 1999 uh, it was also uh, i mean it also won the Booker prize an exemplary uh, uh, campus fiction work you can call it but uh, David Lodge uh, an english professor uh, teaching at the university of birmingham popularized this particular uh, genre of fiction in fact he has campus trilogy uh, uh, written uh, written between 1975 and uh, 89 so here he explores uh, um, the multiple facets of uh, campus fiction he's also a well known uh, theorist on uh, campus fiction and again we come across chetan bhagat's uh, five point someone in fact uh, the subtitle of the work is what not to do at iit in fact the entire fi fiction is set 
in the backdrop of IIT you know that therefore, you can also call it uh, campus fiction Chetan Bhagat's uh, 5 point someone. So, from campus fiction let us go ahead and see other uh, major uh, types of fiction. So, again speculative fiction is a very broad genre of fiction and within speculative fiction you have uh, some minor genres or sub genres. Here generally speaking in speculative fiction the stories are set in uh, uh, parallel universes they are not set in uh, our universe there are parallel planets parallel universes and sometimes you know it is a it is not even the a scientific universe or scientific planet that you and I know of it is a it is a pure fantasy it is a pure fantasy. So, here the writer beautifully creates a new cosmos you know the writer creates a new cosmos new types of characters new animals new people new type of people you know people with three eyes people with one eye people with no ears at all you know people with tails all of them you know all these are possible in uh, speculative fiction that is why they are called speculative fiction. Some of the predominant sub genres of uh, speculative fiction can be science fiction, fantasy fiction, horror fiction, gothic fiction, dystopian literature, apocalyptic, post apocalyptic all the all of them all of them come under speculative fiction. Now, now let us go and uh, take a, a quick look at other uh, subtypes of uh, speculative fiction. Yeah, historical fiction we as we discussed uh, in the beginning of this class historical fiction the setting is in the past you know and generally it revolves around uh, an historical personality that you and I are familiar with, but it is not history. Please remember when you read an historical work you cannot come back and say that uh, the character did exactly as he or she did in the novel that you have read. It is a speculative work though you know so based on the character that existed in history this novel or this fiction takes creative freedom and presents scenario in various uh, uh, you know presents various scenario you know so that is not history. So, you cannot look for historical accuracy here just the background the template is historical and therefore, it is not history as such. So, it is a fictionalized version of uh, various historical figures or various historical uh, you know uh, events say for instance based on Indian independence you there are plenty of historical fiction have come based on the character of uh, Aurangzeb many novels have come especially based on uh, you know the heroic adventures uh, the heroic feat of Shivaji uh, you know uh, many novels have come even an Ashoka many novels have come. So, you can understand broadly speaking what these uh, historical novels do right. Some of the important or well known uh, uh, works that uh, belong to this genre can be Midnight's Children. Again as I said uh, this is not the only genre that you can find writers have the capacity to do lot of mix and match and create uh, very many things. Therefore, you can find shades of historical fiction in Salman Rushdie's uh, Midnight's Children. You can also consider Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children as uh, you know uh, as a work of uh, uh, magic realism because there are a lot of elements of magic realism there. It can also be considered as literary fiction of course, it is literary fiction. So, all of them are possible, but uh, uh, you know because of its uh, setting and locale uh, it can also be read as an historical work. And then you have Shashi Tharoor's The Great Indian Novel again it can be read as a political satire which has a, a detailed and a rich and riveting uh, historical background contemporary historical background you know. Uh, and here Shashi Tharoor uh, does you know he goes a little uh, a step ahead and intertwines uh, 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 inter intertwines uh, uh, elements from the Mahabharata with elements from our freedom struggle and creates uh, the new great Indian novel. In fact, the great Indian novel has uh, echoes of the Mahabharata, it has echoes of our story of uh, independence, Indian struggle for independence and all of them. Similarly, Amitav Ghosh's Hungry Tide too. 
So, these are some well known uh, works that uh, you can say share the features of historical fiction. Okay. From historical fiction, let us go ahead and uh, take a look at science fiction. Okay. Yeah, science fiction, uh, this too is a part of uh, speculative fiction. In science fiction, what happens? depending on uh, you know it is based on futuristic signs based on futuristic signs and advances in uh, technological concepts or technical concepts you know and advances in uh, physics. You develop a story and present it to the audience therefore, you know though there is a uh, uh, you know so maybe it may not be possible right now, but looking at the way our science is progressing, our technology is developing, maybe this may be possible one day. That is a kind of a, uh, a distant uh, resemblance to reality it has. Okay. So, here uh, the plot or the setting is sometime in a, a different planet, it can be in a different universe or here in this universe you know. Uh, the physical laws that govern our universe may be twisted. Let us say for instance, there is a beautiful movie called Upside Down. In fact, the picture that I have taken is from that particular movie. As you can see, uh, this is set in a planet that has dual gravity. It is set in a planet that has dual gravity. Okay. So, now uh, and again there is an element of romance here. So, you can as well call it a sci-fi romance. So, how a person who belongs to you know the downward you know the downward realm uh, reaches the upward realm and falls in love with a girl there and how it poses lot of uh, challenges even uh, you know gravitational challenges and challenges in terms of you know defying authority and all that and how they overcome. So, it is a brilliant novel. So, again it makes use of cutting edge uh, you know advances in science. Uh, and based on some kind of scientific uh, possibility. It is not that that type of science exists now, but when it comes to settings it makes use of our scientific uh, uh, knowledge, our advances in technology and therefore, weaves its plot around them. So, these are some uh, works. So, well known works uh, are Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and uh, the diary of space traveler and other professor shanku stories especially by satyajit roy in in the indian context and all of them you know and you have fahrenheit 451 by uh, broadbury ray broadbury so these are some very well known novels and when it comes to movies uh, you have interstellar of course christopher nolan's uh, interstellar you must have watched it right it is said that the entire movie was shot uh, in the budget that exceeded uh, India's uh, budget for uh, Chandrayaan, it is uh, something like that. Okay, and you have Avatar, which won uh, several international awards, uh, Oscars too, probably more than five Oscars, something like seven Oscars. Avatar, you can imagine uh, you, when you have seen the movie, you can see how it is set in a, a different planet and how it has its own. Uh, creatures, how it has different types of people and how there is a kind of an interaction between people of our world and people of their world. The consequence of that beautifully visually enriching uh, masterpiece uh, all, all of them you know. So, yeah, maybe in order to understand some of these concepts better I also bring in uh, examples from the movies all right because movie is also a type of fiction it is a cellular fiction you know uh, if novel is a verbal fiction movie is a cellular fiction that makes use of audio visual uh, elements. Therefore, in order to better understand our categories I bring in concepts from there. So, from science sci-fi let us uh, go ahead and discuss uh, other kind of speculative fiction in fact fantasy. Fantasy is probably one of the most favorite genres of uh, literature for many of us because of uh, very rich setting it presents. As opposite to sci-fi, in fact sci-fi and fantasy novel they belong to speculative fiction, but as opposed to sci-fi science fiction which deals with universes or future times, here these stories focus on different kingdoms, different kingdoms. Therefore, they may happen very much within our realm, but in a different dimension 
within our world something like that you know. So, here it is a as I said it is a rich tapestry of characters, rich tapestry of sound settings and all of them. So, it is like a parallel cosmos you create a parallel cosmos. Some of the well known examples are Harry Potter series now look what happens here. In fact, uh, Harry Potter world is tucked very much uh, within our world right because uh, you can enter the world of Harry Potter through platform uh, some particular platform which exists uh, in our own platform you know. So, therefore, you can say this world is uh, tucked just behind our world or you know it is uh, between the spaces something like that. Other well known examples include the Lord of Rings and even C. S. Lewis. Uh, the lion, the witch and the wardrobe all of them you know are novels to begin with and they have also been turned into extraordinary movies visually enriching movies. Sometimes they also make use of historical settings, but of course, here they do not resemble any historical personality you know just the setting is a bit historical especially the middle ages ok. When you look at uh, uh, the lion, the witch and the wardrobe the setting is uh, the middle ages and uh, some kingdoms, but these kings may not resemble any kings that you and I know of in modern history. So, these are some possible things that we can keep in mind. The moment we say fantasy, you have uh, mythic creatures, otherworldly beings, magical beings, magical beings, magical thoughts all of them you know. So, that is the reason why let us say for instance when you say unicorn the moment you come across a unicorn you should know that you are reading a work that belongs to fantasy. So, these are some well known uh, the types let us continue our discussion of uh, types of fiction or genres of fiction in the next class until then take care.